Hey there everyone, Hitesh here, back again with another video, and in this video, we're gonna talk about Golang, or also known as Go Programming Language. Now, I know many of the times you are, some of you have already started to understand and think a lot about Go language, but majority of the time, what you have done is either you have downloaded Go directly, have written some code, or you just come up here and say, oh, this is how I, I write a package, I import a package. I write a main function and probably instead of this Chinese, you might be saying something like, hello world, just like that, if I can write that. And you simply go ahead and run this program and simply say, oh, that's it. that is how I run a hello world in Go. And let me also tell you, if your approach is directly getting started with this language by installing it and just writing the hello world program, you're not gonna go very far. At the best, you're gonna go till functions or probably loops or maybe a nearby subject. And that is not where this language shine. This language is not shining just because it has a new syntax of declaring variables. It doesn't shine because it has a new syntax of writing functions and loops. No, that is not the case at all. The reason why this language is shining so much in 2020 because it is too much mature now for adaptation in the real world production and a whole bunch of other things that you need to understand. But if you are not excited about what's happening behind the language, why is it coming out? Why is it shining? Who created this language? Why we are moving in adopting this language? That excitement is necessary to understand and master this language. And that's what exactly we'll be doing in this series. So let's get started and let me officially start the series about the Golang. Now, in this series, I'll walk you through about the Golang and not only just the functions and loops, but we're gonna talk a whole lot about the in-depth and the advanced topics on the Golang. But of course, that requires a lot of patience and I'm pretty sure you got that. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and talk about the Go and one very important thing about the Go is, what's in the name? Is it Go or is it Golang? What should I call this language? Now this language is called as Golang. And whenever you are gonna do any search, whenever you are stuck in any program, you want to look for more resources, you definitely are gonna be talking about Golang. Google also knows that if you're gonna name the language as simply Go, it is too much hard to beat the algorithm and just name this language at the very first result of when somebody search for Go. That's why to make the life of developers easy, they are calling it as Golang every single place, Yes, the official name of language is just Go, but whenever the articles are there or search is there or any Medium article or Stack Overflow article, they're always gonna call this as Golang. And after this particular video, you're also gonna call this every single place as Golang. Now moving on to next important question, and this is the most important one. Where is Go competing? Is it competing in mobile development? Is it competing in machine learning or anything else? Go is actually competing in just one arena as of now, and that's where its major focus is as of now, which is backend, and only the only backend. You're gonna see majority of the libraries are focusing on just the backend, or somehow taking the major advantage of whatever the hardware is present at the backend. Surely, we can work on the front-end system of the client side as well, but that's not where this language is majorly shining on. The major features are actually utilized and can be utilized only on the backend. Now, there are a couple of more interesting questions and which are related uh, to this Go, and that are in the data size. So, next obvious question is, who should use this Go language? I'm, I'm launching a startup, should I use it? And the answer, it depends how much you are looking up to scale in the application. If you look up at the simple scenario where people want to use on the go, I'll give you some of the definitive guide for that. So the major question that is gonna answer this question that uh, should I use go or not is in the data size. So if I'm having a small data size, uh, probably 100,000 users, it's not a big deal for as of now. Any system can handle that, any backend can handle that. When data grows on to the mid size, that's also acceptable and is debatable. Should we move on to a Go-based backend system or probably Node or probably PHP? But when it comes to the G size data, and by the G, you can assume as giant size data, but I rather like to call it as Google size data. Now, many companies are there which are not up to the Google size, but they, yes, they are dealing with the giant size of data and processing of this data. Companies like Uber, companies like Amazon, companies uh, uh, like Twitch, they are 
just dealing up with innumerous amount of data and many of them are real-time data. If your company is handling and scaling at a G-size data, then obviously Go can be one of the places where you can have an implementation. So, what are the features that Go provide us, apart from regular stuff like declaring variables and a whole bunch of other things? Now, again, if you're trying to implement the Go, these are a few things I would like to mention that, yeah, if you're dealing with the data with these of the problems, yeah, Go can be a really good help. The first one is the low latency. Now, world is not really that of a big place after the internet, and latency is something which a lot of people are worried about. They don't want their users to wait while the data is coming from the Northern America to India or from New Zealand to South America, something like that. So this latency issue can be reduced down to a lot, and that is the reason why Twitch adopted this just for having a low latency. Apart from that, garbage collection. I know many languages are associated with having a powerful garbage collection, but we're gonna talk about them in a second. But surely this garbage collection is the thing if you are worried too much about. Go can give you a lot of support in the garbage collection and in the recent update, it's ridiculously fast. You won't even notice. And that's actually on the benchmark scale. It is ridiculously fast. If you're worried about the GPU power and its utilization, then surely Go is your best bet to bet on. Now, many uh, companies like Uber, they deal up with the data in, in so much of the GPU power. Like for example, this Uber app consumes a lot of data for analytics and are doing a whole bunch of other things. In simple world, if you have ever heard about the traveling salesman problem, Uber deals with this kind of a problem, but their problem traveling salesman problem is on steroid and in that case it requires a lot of gpu power and that where the go shines in another the most important thing about the go is its concurrency support and this support is not coming up from any library it's actually built in it's in it's cooked up in the language and with this concurrency things actually brings us to another important couple of questions that we need to answer before getting started with the go now, one other thing is why we need a new language. We have already got some of the amazing languages. If you talk about the speed, we got C, C++. If you talk about the garbage collection and stuff, we got Java. And if you talk about the easiness, we all know we got Python here as well. Now, Go is competing in the new paradigm. You'll see this in articles quite a lot that if Go, you want to define Go, it's 21st century C programming language. Go takes a lot of syntax from the languages like C and Java and makes it ridiculously fast. One of the reason why these languages are not up to mark in today's era is because of their design year and later fix. Languages like C and C++, they are fast, but their compile time is ridiculously so. We have all seen that, that these languages are slow in compile time. Surely the later result is fast, but the compile time is notoriously slow. Other languages do support things like concurrency, but that's not a cooked in support. They later on delivered these fixes about having the concurrencies and at a, ba at a best you can call them as like band-aids, nothing more than that. Now Go comes up with these concurrency features at a cooked in stage. Another thing is in the design year. When the languages like, like C++, Python or Java were designed, the the support of the memory was not really that much of a big thing. We at most were talking about one gigs of RAM and now even in our mobile phones, we are having eight gigs of RAM and 12 gigs of RAM. This is too much. And none of these languages are by default taking advantage of this high memory or GPU processing power at a default. Go shines it at exactly this place. But can I talk about these concurrencies and all these things directly? No, I cannot. I have to talk about Go routines for that first. And in order to talk about Go routines, I have to talk about loops and functions and a whole bunch of other things. Now, one of the things which you're gonna see on the Go uh, page directly up here, I want to, and I'll bring this back again and again in this entire series, is the efficiency. This is the one point which is there entirely in the documentation and you're gonna see why this is there right from the start of the variable declaration. Go focuses a lot on the efficiency of the software and I've never seen a language being so much stick to this one word which is efficiency a lot. Now apart from this, this is the exact line that I picked up from the uh, official documentation. Its concurrency mechanism makes it easy to write program that get most out of the multi-core and network machine. 
Now these multi-core machines are fairly new. Might, might not be that much new to you, but compared to those programming language when they were invented, they were released out in the market, there was no such multi-core processing, no such high memory usage and stuff like that. Go takes the full advantage of these multi-cores and that's where it shines the most. So as of now, companies really are looking and thinking into Go, but it's not easy to find programmers who are having skill knowledge of Go. Now I'm not talking about the language of uh, knowledge of writing loops and functions. Go has its own syntax and its own things like panics and Go routines and concurrency. And it takes time to get an efficiency in that. And unless and until there are a plethora of YouTube tutorials talking about these Go routines and concurrency and multi-core support, it's not gonna be easy for companies to find out these awesome and amazing programmers. So that's what I'm trying to do, put out some more resources on the Go. Now before we go ahead and end this video, I would like to give you a quick assignment as well. And I'm not asking you to change your fan side. Go ahead and be a fan of Elon Musk or maybe Jack Ma or maybe Bill Gates or somebody else. It's okay. But I would like to give you an assignment of finding more about these three guys, uh, Rob Pike, Ken Thompson and Robert. And I highly recommend you to look at it, their work history. And I'm pretty sure you'll be amazed and will become fan of at least one of them. You're gonna see so much of the work history, things like uh, UTF-8, things like JVM, Hotspot, Unix, and a whole bunch of other things is there. And of course, these guys are behind the Go programming language as well. So that's why I'm saying, take a minute or two to find and read more about these guys. They are awesome. They bring so much to us in the community. So it's at least our job and our duty to take and read a little bit at least about them. So that's your introduction to Golang. I hope you are pretty excited about uh, getting started with this series as I am. In the next video, we're gonna do our installation and we'll do our classic Hello World but definitely with some twist. So that's it for this video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to this channel and I'm gonna catch you up in the next video.